I see it is exactly one o'clock. So, um, welcome to the School of Engineering. If you are just joining us now, uh, I hope this next hour will be very informative for you. Uh, just to uh, tell you about how Zoom works, at the bottom there is a Q&A block in the middle of your screen. And if you have any questions to pose, uh, just write them into the Q&A block, either English or Zulu, and we will be able to answer you. Please remember to look at our website, where the Open Day website, UKZN College of Agriculture, Engineering and Science. And we have all sorts of interesting information there. There are lots of videos on engineering, the research being done, the different disciplines that won't be featured now, but they are on the website. And I see Glenn is wearing a tie, which he hardly ever wears. So well done, Glenn. And over to you. Glenn is our Dean and Head of School of Engineering. Thank you, Sally. Just to confirm, I'm file sharing. Yes, you are. Everything's perfect. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys. Welcome to this overview presentation from the School of Engineering. My name is Professor Glenn Bright. I'm the Dean and Head of School at UKZN. And as a starting point, I'd like to say we view ourselves as the top engineering school in South Africa. As you may have already seen, we are part of the one college, the Agriculture, Engineering and Science, also four colleges in the university structure. The college structure that we are in, Agricultural, Engineering and Science, has five schools. You can see the five schools listed uh, along the bottom. And of course, the one we're interested in talking about today is engineering. We are led by Professor Albert Modi, who's our Deputy Vice Chancellor and Head of School. And we also have a College Dean, Director of Professional Services and College Dean of Research. If you look more in depth at the School of Engineering, the academic structure, we have four clusters. What's a cluster? A cluster is an array of disciplines. So if you look at the, the picture on the left-hand side, one cluster of civil, agricultural engineering, chemical engineering, electronic, computer, and electrical engineering, and mechanical engineering. Essentially, the seven engineering disciplines are there. Under agriculture, we also have survey and construction. We also have a school manager, academic lead of teaching and learning, academic lead of research, and of course, the engineering access program, which was talking to earlier this morning. So if you're going to do a degree in engineering at UKZN, these are your options. Civil engineering, agricultural engineering, survey, uh, BSc chemical engineering, electronic, electrical computer engineering, and of course, mechanical engineering. So a little bit about the School of Engineering. Not only do we have undergrad students, we also had masters and PhD students of which in 2018, we had about 453 masters and about 106 PhDs. And these are climbing every year as we produce more and more graduates. We have a large complement of staff, strong researchers, and we have developed international exposure and local exposure, of course. Some of the exciting aspects of engineering, of course, is our research groups, and many staff are involved in academics because of that. And we are, of course, encourage students to get involved. Mechatronics Research Group is an example of material science, aerospace, artificial intelligence, biochemical reaction engineering, thermodynamics, radio technology, voltage DC engineering, and many others. Uh, these can be found on the webpage. If you go to the school webpage, you'll meet the research groups as well. So in terms of staffing, we have 84 academic staff, very dedicated staff, and we support about 70 technical staff. We of course range from lecturer to professor, we have student support structures, and we also have personal guidance and career guidance as we move along. Every year we graduate about 400 students, and in total we have about 2,500 students through the years. It is a four-year program, which means it's an honors degree, and in line with our international accreditation, which I'll say a few minutes, in a minute or so. And you go from honors to postgrad, masters to PhD. Generally, the degree takes four years, uh, but sometimes it can take five or six years, depending on the progression of the student. 
engineering has come a long way. Uh, within 100 years, while well, man has learned to fly and more, going up into space now, we have the internet, personal computers, almost everybody has access to now. And we're into things like genetic engineering um, and other exciting engineering disciplines. So the jobs that the sons and daughters will be doing, we equip them for jobs for the future because engineering is so multidisciplinary, it's so dynamic that we have to equip them with problem solving skills and abilities. Very important, all engineering degrees at UPZN are fully accredited through the Engineering Council of South Africa, signatories to the Washington Accord of the US. They are all fully accredited to the year 2024. 2024 will be revisited by the Engineering Council of South Africa, EXA, for an evaluation. The degree is tough, but rewarding. Uh, the transition from school is quite steep, and therefore you have to work hard. And while students can have some social stuff from the Dean's perspective, we would like to see hard work and efficiency. So, we'd like to join us, uh, UKZ in Engineering. Uh, join the school, do a degree in a Bachelor of Science degree in Engineering, Master's degree, PhD degree, and come join us and climb the ladder of lifelong learning. And um, allow us to be and continue to be the top engineering school in South Africa. Thank you very much. And I'm going to hand over to Professor Michael Brooks, who's the academic leader of mechanical engineering. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Bright. Uh, for that introduction and uh, hello everybody and uh, it's a pleasure to be with you today. I'm going to share my screen for a presentation on mechanical engineering. So I'm the academic leader of mechanical engineering here at UKZN, and it's a pleasure to be able to tell you a little bit something about uh, our program today. As Prof has already uh, mentioned, we offer the Bachelor of Science degree in mechanical engineering. Uh, in our case, mechanical engineering, it's a four year uh, program and it's fully accredited by EXA through to 2024. We are of course, uh, based on the Howard College campus on uh, Durban's Berea. And of course, if you are interested in coming to study with us, and we hope you are interested, then uh, you must get good matric marks in mathematics, science, and English. These are the fundamental subjects. Uh, you could say maths and science are the language of engineers, and English is important to communicate your ideas between engineers. So those are very important subjects. Most of our students come to the program with between 38 and 44 points. It's quite competitive. I encourage you to work hard if you plan to become uh, a mechanical engineer and study with us here at UKZN. So one of the main subjects or one of the main questions that I get asked when we're visited by uh, learners from schools is what kind of subjects am I going to study when I'm with you? What kind of work will I do when I'm finished? So most of the um, most of the subjects that you study in first year for mechanical engineering will be the same as the subjects that you study in the other disciplines. So the first year is fairly common. You will start with drawing and chemistry and mathematics and applied mathematics, physics, engineering materials, and design. And of course, again, these are the foundational subjects for all engineering disciplines. So first year is much the same. On your screen there, you will be able to see a, a picture of a water rocket that's a, a, a design of a, of a water rocket that's done by one of our final year project groups as part of their mechanical engineering uh, program. So first year might be more or less the same across the different disciplines, but it's really from second year where we start to specialize. In mechanical engineering, you will start to take some very specific subjects that help you become that engineer, that mechanical engineer. And the question is, what are you going to study? So as Prof Bright has already mentioned, uh, we have many research groups in our, in our uh, school and in mechanical engineering, we do research in robotics, manufacturing, in energy and in aerospace. But I don't know if you know this, but we are the only university in the country that has a research group dedicated to rocket propulsion. And so because that's the research group I'm involved with, I'm going to use this as an example to show you the kind of subjects that you will study when you come to join us. 
of course, not everyone ends up building rockets. It doesn't matter. These subjects are the same across all mechanical engineering, this, uh, mechanical engineering fields. And you need to know these things that we will teach you in these various subjects. So I'm going to use a hybrid rocket to illustrate this point. So let's start with the first subject that you will study. And this is design. Engineers are creative. We have ideas, we have dreams, but we have to turn those dreams into reality. And so we do that using the design language, the language of design. So here we have a rocket. This is the design idea. It has a motor, it has an oxidizer tank, and it has a nose cone, which is the sharp bit on the top. So we have to know how to design and use the various software programs and uh, principles of design that allow us to design well and efficiently. The second subject that you will study with us is strength of materials. On your screen, you have what looks like three identical things, but they look a little different. This comes out of our rocket. Again, remember I'm telling you we're gonna use a rocket as an example of, of uh, these different subjects and how they're applied. This case, this component closes off the propellant tank on the rocket. On the very left of your screen, you see a CAD design for the bulkhead for the rocket tank. But the middle picture shows a simulation of that part when it's loaded. Because of course, strength of materials is concerned with loading and forces, and whether the components are able to um, withstand the, the loads that are applied to them. And then on the right of your screen, you see the final finished component. So this is a good illustration of how we use strength of materials to design a component. Well, we're designing our rocket, but now we need to know if we launch it, where is it gonna go? And so we come to the subject of dynamics. The dynamics is taking a component or a mechanism and modeling it with mathematics to see where and how it's going to perform. And you can see on your screen there, there's a model of a rocket in flight. And then there's the trajectory that the rocket we think is going to follow when we launch it from its launch pad. The next subject that is of very great importance is material science. Of course, you can't build anything if you don't know something about the materials that make up components. So here we see the rocket motor. And if we take a cross section through that motor, we can see there are many different materials that go into its manufacture. For example, there's aluminum in the casing, the nozzle of the, of the rocket motor, which is this part up here at the back, is made of graphite because it gets very hot and it has to withstand the heat. We have a steel casing, we have polyethylene, we have cotton phenolic and wax as the fuel of the rocket. It's what actually burns inside the chamber. Then of course there's mechatronics. Mechatronics is the fusion of electrical engineering and mechanical engineering. And here we have a servo valve which controls the propellant from our rocket tank into the motor. And you can see a picture of that servo valve, which is controlled by a computer. And the servo valve is being run in a cold flow test. And you can see the nitrous oxide coming out the nozzle of the rocket. Well, we've now designed our rocket. We have thought about the materials that we're going to make it out of. We've talked about how it might fly with the dynamics. We've looked at the mechatronic control of the fuel. Now we have to build the rocket. And of course, mechanical engineers have to manufacture things. We can't just dream, we have to manufacture as well. So here we're talking about all sorts of manufacturing, how to make better production lines, how to make different products on the same production line. And in this case, in the photographs, you see there is our propellant tank for our rocket. And in this particular case, that propellant tank is being manufactured from a very advanced material called carbon fiber. And of course, carbon fiber is dry. It has to be wound onto the tank and then it has to be set using a resin. So manufacturing processes are very important in mechanical engineering. And of course, if you are a Formula One motor racing fan, you will know that all of the Formula One cars are made from carbon fiber, from graphite, Kevlar, and all sorts of exotic materials. And those are the, some of the things we have to learn about in manufacturing. Well, now we get to the last two subjects. The next one is fluid mechanics. Mechanical engineers are interested in things that move. That's generally true, right? So if you're a mechanical engineer, you want to see movement. Uh, of course, if you're a civil engineer, you don't want to see movement, but that's a different story. But for mechanical engineers, at least, we want to know where does the flow go, for example, in our rocket chamber. So here I've got a picture of a computational fluid dynamic simulation of the flow of propellant inside our chamber. 
So before we built the rocket, we can model how the flow is going to go and where it's going to go. And then lastly, the fun part, and perhaps the king of all mechanical subjects is thermodynamics. So our rocket is propelled upwards using this thrust that is produced in the chamber and the gases in that chamber are very hot and they are under great pressure and they get exhausted at about 6,000 kilometers per hour out the back of the rocket and the rocket is propelled upwards. So there uh, everybody is, is the kind of subjects that you're going to study when you come and study mechanical engineering with us. And then the question is, but what will I do when I get my degree? Well, there are many different industries that you can work in. You don't have to build rockets. You can do all sorts of things. You can build um, equipment for the sugar industry. You can work in the paper and pulp industries. You can work in the mining industry. You can work in aerospace. Uh, you can work in naval architecture, biomedical. You can look at power generation. You could work for ESCOM or for a renewable power company. You can do simulation work, R&D work. There are many, many different degrees. And I would argue, although my colleagues might disagree a little bit, I would argue that mechanical engineering is probably the broadest of the engineering disciplines. And you have lots of options in terms of your work uh, options when you leave. You might also want to stay and do a master's degree with us or even a PhD and become a doctor of engineering. So, of course, what I must just mention as well that a recent study showed that uh, the starting salaries of engineer, engineering graduates are the second highest of all disciplines in South Africa. So there's my final, um, my final comments is just to say, if you are good at maths and physics, and if you are creative, and if you dream of designing the next electric car, the next Tesla, or the next SpaceX rocket, or perhaps the next robot, or perhaps you want to build a new human heart, or a more efficient factory, then mechanical engineering is the degree that you probably are interested in. And we would be very interested in you coming and studying with us. And so I wish you all the best for your studies in matric and, and below if you are not yet matric. And please visit our website at mechanicalengineering.ukzn.ac.za. And you might want to visit our aerospace website as well, which you can find on the same website. And with that, I'm going to hand back across to uh, Professor Mostafa, I believe, who is in uh, civil engineering, and he's going to take over. So thanks very much, everybody, for listening, and all the best. Thank you, Professor Mike. And good afternoon, everyone. Let me share with you my presentation. My name is Mohammed Mustafa. I'm the academic leader of a vast discipline of uh, uh, engineering. My cluster includes civil engineering, agriculture or bioresources engineering, geomatics or land surveying, and all three under offer currently. And we are part of the School of Engineering as explained by the Dean. The admission criteria for any of our three programs is at least 33 NSC points. And as explained by Prof. Brooks, Normally, we go higher than that, 70% at least in math and physics and 50% in English. So we need to work hard to get admission to engineering. I'll go through the three disciplines one by one, starting with civil engineering, which is based at Howard College in Durban. Civil engineering is basically about providing services for civilization. So today, when you woke up in the morning at your house or at your flat, this building is built by civil engineers. And the water and sanitation supply to your building is done by civil engineers as well. In normal days, you may go out going to your school using a road or a tunnel. That's another civil engineering project. The school itself is a civil engineering project. Showing centers, any entertainment facility like convention center, stadiums, all these are civil engineering projects as well. The hospitals, they are civil engineering projects. Airports, dams, bridges, underground structures, and harbors, all of these are civil engineering projects. We work with other engineering disciplines to provide a complete services 
for civilization. We started before every, every, every uh, before everyone. So we built the pyramids 2,500 BC. We started building water treatment plants 2000 BC. We started building roads 300 BC. And the Great Wall of China is another example, 1,400. So we are looking at solving complex problems. And these are some current examples, sunken towers, spaghetti junction, backburn bridge, and the worst water treatment in Cape So it's all about complex problems. So our offering has multidisciplinary within civil engineering. So our courses are formulated around different areas where civil engineers can do their job. But all these areas will include design and or construction of a project. So the most common area is structural engineering. This is basically about building structures like buildings, stadiums, bridges, using different materials. So we study materials as well, concrete, steel, wood, etc. And we study characteristics of loading. How can load move from one element to another element uh, uh, to satisfy the architecture requirements of any structure? Our transportation courses will help you to also design and construct transportation infrastructures, roadways, railways, airports, harbors, traffic robots, roundabouts, all of these elements you study how to do. Our geotechnical engineering subjects will assist our graduates to work with constructions of earthworks and foundations. So basically this is under surface projects, which is necessary for all the projects. We also have water resources subjects, and these are formulated around supply and treatment of water, including design of dams and pipeline networks. Lastly, we have environmental engineering courses, and these are formulated to help design and construction of wastewater and solid waste treatment. The second discipline I'm going to discuss with you today is the power resources or the agricultural engineering, and it is based in Peter Marsbach. So what is agricultural engineering? It's basically connecting the plants, the soil, the water, and the animals through technology. So it's different from agriculture science. We use technology to help agriculture science. It has a very unique uh, uh, interest in helping the engineering side, the environment side, and the agriculture side. So in the heart of all these sciences, the bioresources engineering will be very important. So what are the areas for a bioresource engineer? We work with hydrology, and this is the main area. Ecology, it's also part of the bioresources engineering. Land use, this is another important area. Food and fiber production and processing and structured and controlled environments for plant and animal production. The third discipline I'm going to discuss with you today is land surveying or geomatics. So this is not a direct engineering. It doesn't belong to uh, Engineering Council of South Africa. It is a land surveying profession. It is based in Howard College. And it's mainly about collection processing and management of geo information related to fixed locations on above or below the earth surface. Geomatics or land surveying has different numbers of areas where our graduates can work in, including a distance surveying. This is where new property boundaries are set for building of new uh, 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 projects. Engineering surveys, this is to help the start of engineering projects and machine alignments. Space and geodetic surveying, and they work to help physicists to understand the size and shape of the Earth. Photogrammetry and remote sensing, this is basically about 
collecting maps using photos. And now, of course, drones became the most common tool for this purpose. So this is something related to Google Maps and similar applications. Laser scanning to help the engineers understand the 3D uh, uh, creation of a project. GIS, about well, data collection and processing. And lastly, the hydrographic surveying. This is to create maps for the seabed and underwater topography. So if I graduate from one of these three disciplines, where can I find a job? As Prof. Brooks mentioned, engineering is a scarce skill. So there is a huge demand for engineers and also for land surveyors. So basically you can work for a lot of government departments for all municipalities. You can work in a government engineering company like ESCOM, Transnet, Sanra, uh, private companies like Oricon, PHP, Peloton, Sasol, and so on. The construction, as I mentioned several times, most of our areas is about basically design and construction. So you can work in construction as well, like in at Dropbox and Group 5. Uh, we are very active in research, so you can join our research groups and continue your master and PhD. We have fantastic research groups in all the areas I mentioned. Or you can be an academic after you finish your PhD and you start being a, a lecturer and move to be a professor one day. Or simply, you can work abroad. And this is easy because, as the dean mentioned, we are fully accredited with EXA which is part of the Washington Accord, so we don't have to write exams to work overseas. And our land surveyors are also accredited by PLATO and SAGC. We have a highly qualified team, and I prefer the word team rather than staff because we really work together as a team. And this team has a multinational, multinational experience, so we have international lecturers and we have national lecturers as well. We built very good connection with industry. So as you are a student, you find yourself involved with industry ideas, industry needs, industry seminars. So when you graduate, you are not strange to the market. We have excellent facilities in terms of uh, uh, teaching theaters, laboratories, and our laboratories are uh, uh, at high standards. In fact, when EXA visited us last year, they commended the civil engineering laboratories as one of the best, if not the best, in the country. And most importantly, we inspire greatness. So let's build the future together. We welcome you at Civil Engineering, Bio Resources Engineering, or Land Surveying for 2021, and looking forward to see you there. Thank you very much. And now I hand the floor to Prof. Tom from Electrical Engineering. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let me share my screen with all of you. Okay, I'm Prof. Tiwa Lingo, the academic leader of the discipline of electrical, electronic, and computer engineering. Now, the first question is, just briefly, who are we as engineers and what do we do? We are applied scientists who use scientific principles to invent, design, build machine structures, actually to make the world a better place. Now, the question comes, what do we do? I want to answer and say basically everything. The accountants use our computers. The doctors use our machines to diagnose patients. You go to work if you are lucky in a Ferrari made by engineers. We take you to space. We entertain you by going to stadiums. The same phone you talk with your friend is made by us. We make you travel with our airplanes, we build bridges, and we get you to have your favorite drink in the process factories. Now, let me go deeper a bit. The electrical, electronic, and computer engineering. Let me start with the electrical, which is the math. It's just, we deal there with the generation transmission control and utilization of energy. Generation could be wind generated, it could be nuclear, it would be coal, and then we transmit and then use it. This is an electric machine, electric train, 
where we apply. The next one is electronic, where we also look at generation, transmission, and processing of information that is used in satellites, that is a transmission system, that is a circuit, and some form of this, uh, digital signal process. What about computer? Engineering is the development of software and hardware and computer networks. That is part of the hardware we develop, we bring you the internet and all that. Now, let me go deep into the clusters themselves. Okay, we've got electrical engineering. What are some of the key courses? I won't outline each of the very courses. You can check them with the prospectors. We've got high voltage engineering, where you are dealing with high volt. We've got electrical machines. And then we've got power electronics there. Those are the things that you need. And we've got controls and instrumentation. This is a typical industrial control system. So where are you going to work in organizations? You've got ESCO. In short, why should you do it? If you want to work, you've got organizations like ESCO, Transnet, Sassel, Denel, and Lumetal. You can work with the government. The Department of Trade and Industry can give you those opportunities. Uh, you can work with the municipality. The Queen is there, for example, that takes quite a lot of, in fact, the junk of our engineers. Equipment manufacturers are also there and then self consultants. But most important, you can invent and be self employed. That is what we want. You want you to invent yourself, start your own companies, and contribute to technology. In fact, then why? The question is why do it? You've got enough global opportunities. You can go anywhere with these degrees accredited. And of course, your pocket will not be very bad. You'll have your degree and you relatively live comfortably. And another thing is you've got a career. You will smile. Self-worth. When you say you are an engineer somewhere, I mean, people look and listen to you. And in fact, most of the government's budget is spent on engineering projects. So those are some of the things that should encourage you to join this field. Electronic engineering. Well, what will you find there? You will find digital communications, you've got satellites there, embedded systems is there, digital processes, these electronics, instrumentation, and you can see car electronics and all the accessories. Where, where will you work? You've got the telecom, you've got MTN, you've got Vodacom, the government as well, you've got SAPREF there that takes quite our engineers, the municipality and Toyota just next those. In fact, what I'm telling you is most of the top richest people in the world have got something to do with engineering. So please join the club. So there's quite a lot of global opportunities. I mean, your pocket will not be very bad. You will be well taken care of and you will work with a smile on your face. And then next is computer engineering. What do you expect? The, the key subjects, you expect embedded systems, can you imagine building your own chips? You expect operating systems, software engineering, signal processing, artificial intelligence. Everyone wants to go there. Data networks, data systems. You've heard of Internet of Things. If you want to be very active there, then go to computer engineering. There's big data. It's a big word that you keep hearing. Go to computer engineering. That is embedded systems. Building drones, they are part of mechanical and we've got computer engineering there as well. Robotics, you know, all the world is interlinked, different kinds of engineering. Now you are saying, where will I work? I mean, some of the giant companies in the world are in this area, Intel, Hewlett and Packard, Amazon, Facebook, and something funny, banks have also started recruiting our graduates because of the multidisciplinary nature and the way we equip them with problem solving. ABSA takes our students, FNB, <clears throat> the government departments as well. And then we've got companies like Siemens, which are take our students. And then still, you've got global opportunity. You can work anywhere in the world. Our degrees are accredited. And then you've got, well, us, but the others, you will also be well taken care of and you will be a happy engineer. I want to repeat that some of the world's giant companies, Google, Amazon, all of them are around this area. So it's the in thing. And if you've heard of something called fourth industrial revolution, this is what 
makes the fourth industrial revolution tick. So just a summary, why should you study with us? Actually, we are a reputable university. The rankings just came up and we did very well. Then our curriculum in EECE is very modernized. We keep on updating and it is to international standards. We've got competent staff. We have a competent team. We've got well-equipped laboratories. They were even praised by X. We conduct cutting edge research. In fact, there are some projects like a power line robot that are actually very good. They have won awards. We've got our center of excellence in telecommunications that is one of the best in the university and probably the best in telecommunications in the country. Like as the Dean says, we've got accredited degrees. Our degrees are accredited. And as Omar said, you can work anywhere with, it, with our degree. You don't need to go through so many questions. And then we've done quite a number of projects where we've won some awards, our undergrad projects, the ENOS in radio propagation, in high power computing. All this is actually on our website. What will we give you as a student, as somebody who is joining us? We will give you analytical and problem solving skills. We will empower you and not just simple problems, complex problems. Actually, when you graduate with us, you will be highly priced in not even various, most of the industries when they know that you have our degree, I mean, everything is just fine. And then we will also empower you with the ability to do anything. You can be drawn, you can be dropped in the deep end and then you will be able to swim. I mean, problem solving skills. Our, the employers are happy with our students and we are also happy with them. Something funny of late, most fields that are not in engineering like banks are busy taking our products, which means our products are good and they appreciate our products. So how do you join us? Just get good matric grades. The enrollment is transparent and then join us and then be able to work hard. You will reap all these things that uh, we have been telling you about. So welcome to Electrical, Electronic and Computer Engineering at UKZN. I'm looking forward to see you. Should you have any queries, just feel free to email and go and check on our website. I hand over to David, thanks. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Molingo, for that introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is David Lockhart. I am the academic leader for chemical engineering at UKCD. Just going to share my screen. Okay, um, today I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the great opportunities for study in this area at our institution. Now, in order to put into context what a chemical engineer does, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like us to go through a quick history lesson. Uh, it is well known that since ancient times, uh, people have been transforming raw materials into useful products. Uh, it wasn't until about the 17th century that people began to formalize these techniques into a discipline that they called chemistry. And as the industrial age came about, people realized that a special branch of engineering was necessary to handle the development of large scale processes to make these wonderful products. And so chemical engineering was born. As it was then, and so it is now, chemical engineers are involved in the design and optimization of processes to convert raw materials into useful products. Chemical engineers are also involved in the maintenance of chemical or manufacturing plants, as well as safety management. Chemical engineers solve real world problems, formulating ways to improve quality of life through new products and processes. They are involved in a wide variety of industries, including chemical production, energy conversion, plastics manufacturing, bioengineering, pulp and paper, as well as food and beverage. At UKZN, our department covers all levels of the discipline, including the undergraduate bachelor's program, as well as postgraduate, master's and PhD. 
Our vision is to be the preferred department of chemical engineering in the country. Our mission is to provide high quality education in chemical engineering to undergraduate and postgraduate students, to facilitate the generation and dissemination of new knowledge in the discipline, and to advance the provision for tangible societal impact. In fact, impact that our students and alumni have on the broader society really guides what we do. The chemical engineering program is fully accredited by the Engineering Council of South Africa and is internationally benchmarked by the Institution of Chemical Engineers in the United Kingdom. We have some of the largest and most productive research groups in the country, including the top published engineering researchers in Africa. Our research focus areas are in biorefining, water and sanitation, thermodynamics, chemical reaction engineering, particle technology, and minerals processing, as well as process control and optimization. Our modern curriculum and state-of-the-art laboratories have been commended by accrediting and advisory bodies. We have some of the best pilot scale equipment in the country, which enable our students to learn key concepts in a realistic environment. Our program is developed to enable graduates to carry out chemical process design, as well as process and product research and development. In the first year, students are exposed to the foundational material in mathematics, chemistry, and physics. In the second year, we build on this foundational material by introducing concepts most relevant to our discipline. In the third year, students begin to use these abstract co concepts in applied problems before moving on to their final year, where their applied knowledge is put to use in the design of a chemical process. But more than that, more than the technical knowledge, our students develop new skills that greatly enhance their value and employability, including good problem solving ability, rational thinking ability, lateral thinking ability, a unique and high level of curiosity, forward thinking ability, excellent communication and social skills, as well as independent thinking and a keen grasp of responsibility and ethics. Chemical engineering is really one of the most versatile disciplines. Our students can be deployed in a variety of roles across the industrial sector, including traditional engineering roles in the processing industries, such as mining, petrochemicals, food production, and consumer goods, as well as roles that leverage our students' critical ways of thinking, such as consulting and analytics in the business sector. In this rapidly changing world, a chemical engineering degree from UKZN can equip students with the necessary skills to make a real difference in their careers and their country. We invite you to be a part of this journey. Thank you. I'd like to now hand over to Ms. Ingrid Bortha, uh, who's gonna give us a student perspective of the, the School of Engineering. Thank you very much. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ingrid Boerta and I am currently completing my master's in mechatronic engineering at UKZN. So I'm here today to settle some of the worries that you may have about the transition from high school to university and to share some of my own personal experiences as a student at UKZN studying mechanical engineering. So let's start at the beginning, first year. So lectures will be taking up your day. You'll be throwing on your lab coats and goggles in between classes to head to your chemical engineering pracs and do your first year practicals in the physics workshops. Most of your day will be spent in the vast halls of the science block, sharing your lectures with the other first year students from all the engineering departments. You'll get to know computer engineering students, visit the library with chemical engineering students, and play some pool in the common area with the electrical engineering students. Your day will be busy and you even busier. Fortunately, you'll have the timetable prepared by the college office to guide your way. No need to worry about getting lost or trying to find your way to the next lecture venue. The workload will be tough, 
but it will be so worth it to reach second year and start studying the more focused modules in the mechanical engineering building. Here, you'll be greeted by a rocket engine when you walk in the door. Run your hand over the frame of a racing buggy when you head into the computer room and crane your neck to study the solar cars mounted on the walls of our hallways as you head to class, all designed by people in this building. Of course, in between all of this, you're going to form bonds with all the students around you. You'll become best friends with the lab partner that you shared in first year. You're each other's support system now, and sometimes it'll feel like you're the only people in the world who truly understand what it means to study engineering. And the study of engineering really has a unique way of completely obliterating the way that you perceive the world around you. And suddenly you really open your eyes and, and see the world around you for the first time, to see the phenomena happening around you every single day and to understand the technological breakthroughs and marvels that humans have created all around the world. And to give you a purpose in not only the transfer of this knowledge, but also creating new ideas. And it, it feels almost like you've been half asleep for most of your life and suddenly you open your eyes and you take this breath of fresh air. And this personal transformation can be quite jarring at times, but you are never without support. People often have this opinion of universities that it's just this vast space and you're surrounded by faceless strangers. At the School of Engineering at UKZN, you will find yourself in the center of a web of support. Be it from your friends, your tutors who are also students, the college counselors whose doors are always open, or your lecturers. And then there's the SI tutors who provide extra classes, the SciMeki chapter who run student events, workshops and industry visits, and the Engineers Without Borders student chapter. And one of the moments that really stood out to me is funny enough, when I was struggling with a particularly challenging module, and I wasn't certain whether I would be able to still finish my degree in four years. So I went to the head of my school, Professor Bright, who's on the panel with us today, and asked for his advice. And he didn't hesitate to put time aside and even went so far as to explain that he had struggled with a similar situation in his final year. He motivated me to try. And in that moment, he wasn't just an academic or a school leader or a lecturer, he was a mentor. And the reason that I can say with pride that I finished my degree that year. And I feel like this is an approach shared by all of the staff and lecturers in the School of Engineering. And on that note, I think we should jump into the question and answer session with the rest of our panel. Thank you so much for listening and I hope to see some of you next year. Thanks very much, Ingrid. Um, can the rest of the engineering panel uh, please show themselves, uh, keep yourselves muted. Uh, there you all are. Thank you for joining us. I've got a few questions that have come in. Uh, if anyone still wants to ask, you can post them in the Q&A, but in the meantime, I will post this question, Mark, I think you best place to answer this. Uh, can I study a degree in aerospace engineering at UKZN? Well, thanks, Sally. Aerospace engineering is um, really a specialization of mechanical engineering. So um, we don't offer an aerospace degree as such, but we certainly have a strong flavor of aerospace engineering within the mechanical program. So I would answer this question in two ways. Firstly, in the undergraduate program between years two and four, you will experience subjects that relate to aerospace engineering. For example, in your thermodynamics courses, you will look at jet engines and other uh, turboprop engines. You will look at um, aerospace propulsion systems. Uh, in final year, you will even have the opportunity to do an elective in rocket propulsion if you wish. And soon we'll, we will be introducing an elective in turbo machinery 
which is a specialized subject in uh, gas turbine jet engines. So that's the first way you can do aerospace uh, type subjects. And then uh, in the master's program, of course, once you finish your bachelor's degree, you wish to do a master's degree, which usually takes about a year and a half to two and a half years. And uh, you can then specialize even further in either gas turbines or in rocket propulsion uh, projects. So although we don't offer a specific aerospace degree, there's a lot of aerospace flavor in the mechanical degree uh, which more than satisfies most people who are interested in that field. Uh, thanks, Mike. Um, Glenn, this is a question maybe I'll pose to you. Uh, firstly, why study engineering at UKZN rather than anywhere else? And secondly, why study engineering rather than anything else? Okay, thank you for that. Um, well, why study engineering? It's a very rewarding career. You know, um, engineers solve problems. And one of the things we are really lucky is because we live in South Africa, South Africa has a lot of problems. So guess what? There's a lot of work for engineers. So when people say to us, well, we have all these problems, we should put our hands up and say, yes, that's good, because my engineers are going to be useful. A country with no problems won't need any engineers. We need engineers. It's a very rewarding career. It's a very good lifestyle. You'll earn a good living. You'll have a good lifestyle. And also you'll be rewarded in terms of mental inspiration. So there is absolutely no reason why you shouldn't do engineering. Why do the UKZN? As already mentioned, uh, the accreditation, we pride ourselves on our output. We pride ourselves on the work ethic. We also pride ourselves uh, on the high caliber of staff we have, very enthusiastic staff. Staff are always there to help. We have open door policy for students who are looking for assistance. And um, we just really feel that we can give you the best broad-based degree, uh, the best experience. And we have very good equipment in laboratories. Over the last 10 years or so, we have recapitalized our laboratories and we have some state-of-the-art stuff which allows you, and also international collaboration. Many of us have good international links. And uh, once you've finished, we can uh, allow you and get you to meet up with international researchers, universities, et cetera. All those good reasons. Um, Glenn, you mentioned EXA accreditation. Maybe um, you can explain to our audience who might not know, what, why is this so important? What does it mean? Okay, so when you do a degree at a university, the university itself doesn't accredit a degree. It's a professional body that accredits a degree, whether it's medicine, accounting, and engineering. So the professional body for engineering is the Engineering Council of South Africa, and they tasked by the government to make sure that degrees that have, or want to have accreditation have to meet certain requirements. Now, the Engineering Council of South Africa is a signatory to the Washington Accord, and this is the highest quality process uh, or evaluation that any engineering degree program can aspire to worldwide. So we are fully accredited, as you said, signatories to the Washington Accord. And this thing gives the parent and also the son or the daughter the knowledge uh, and the satisfaction that you're doing a degree that's internationally recognized and you can go worldwide with that degree and secure employment by producing a certificate to show that we are accredited through the Washington Accord. Uh, thanks, Glenn. Um, Ingrid, this question is for you. It, it was posed by one of the audience member, members. Is engineering traditionally a male occupation or how, where do you see the role of females in engineering, being an engineering female student yourself? I would say historically it was a um, pr uh, mostly male occupation, but times are definitely a changing. And every year you see more and more female students join in um, under the engineering faculty. And to all the ladies out there thinking of studying engineering, there is no dream too big and there is no idea too vast. Reach for it with both your hands. Thanks, Ingrid. Um, the next question uh, revolves application. So Denise, I'll um, send this the, your way. Firstly, how well do you have to do in maths and science at school? And then just talk us through the actual application process. If you want to come study here next year, what do you need to do? Hi, um, so to apply, you apply through the central applications office. 
This can be done online. And we've already given out a large number of conditional offers for those that have already applied based on their grade 11 results. Um, the requirements are 70% in maths and physics, that's level six. And the minimum points is 33. However, we generally don't go that low. Uh, for now, we've given out conditional offers to all applicants with 40 points and above. Uh, what was the other question, Sally? Uh, how, how well you have to do in maths. Another question's come in here. If I get 60%, 69% in maths in grade 11, will I have a chance of being accepted? Um, unfortunately not. The requirements are 70%, and this has also got to do with our extra accreditation. So we cannot lower our requirements as these are approved by the Engineering Council of South Africa. Um, maybe, would you be able to clarify what's going to happen next year uh, in terms of looking at grade 11 results, looking at grade 12 results and the whole COVID situation? Okay, so um, we have, as I said, we've already given out conditional offers. However, the final offer is only given once the, matric the final matric results become available. We get access to their information directly from the Department of Education. So once the, the final results are released, you'll be notified uh, by email and SMS of the outcome of your application. But also know that we, we receive around 15,000 applications for about 600 places. So it is quite a task to get through all the applications. Um, however, the first batch of offers are sent, sent out in a day after receiving the, after the matric results are finalized. In terms of when we start, uh, the university dates will be uh, scheduled around this, the, 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 the school date or when the results are released. Generally, we start lectures in the second week of February. However, due to the pandemic, this will obviously change as the school year will uh, probably go into next year, but um, we won't start before the matrix have completed. Okay. Um, we've got two more minutes. I'll pose a question to, uh, I'm looking, is he here? Uh, okay, I'll pose a question to Glenn. Glenn, once I've, I've graduated and I'm, I've got my BSc engineering degree, am I a qualified engineer or do I have to do an internship? Do I have to register? What happens? Yeah, look, you're a qualified engineer because you would have done um, in service training, generally it's around about 12 or 13 weeks you would have done. So you'll have a BSc uh, engineering degree specialized in mechanical, electrical, computer, whatever. In order to get a professional engineering ticket, that's taking the step further. That's where you have to register with the Engineering Council of South Africa at EXA. And once you uh, achieve or do a number of reports for them, they get evaluated you can get something called a PRN, which is a professional registration. So you do get a degree in engineering uh, from the university, and then most people should go on and get a professional engineering certificate or recognition from the Engineering Council. So that normally takes three or four years of industrial experience. Okay, and then one final question, which I'll also address to you, is can I study mechatronics at UKZN? Okay, so the answer is the same as uh, Dr. Brooks or Professor Brooks from Mechanical Engineering. We offer mechatronics as a specialization in final year. It's a compulsory course. And most of our final year projects, which are all compulsory uh, in mechanical engineering, are mechatronics projects because we are building mechanical systems. We are controlling them with electronics and we program them software. As with the example with a rocket, as with the example with robots, as with vehicles, domestic appliances, et cetera. So we, are, we have a very strong flavor of mechatronics because mechanical engineering has become very multidisciplinary. In addition to that, we do do an MSc mechatronics uh, and it is called that, and you can do a PhD mechatronics. So at the postgrad level, you can specialize purely in mechatronics at MSc and PhD. In the undergrad, it's more broad based, but we are heavily aligned towards mechatronics due to the nature of engineering becoming multidisciplinary over the last 10 to 15 years as we've moved into the fourth industrial revolution. Okay, uh, we've now run out of time. So I'm going to unfortunately have to stop this panel. 
Uh, there are a few questions sitting in the Q&A. So if panelists, if you can just clear them before you log out, engineering panelists. And Tom, there was a question about IT software. You need to write your answer, if you can just type in the answer. Uh, so thank you, engineers. Um, our audience who've been watching this panel, please remember to do our poll. And if I can ask the engineers to remove themselves, enjoy your afternoon. And we're going to move on now to the School of Life Sciences. And thank you, thank you guys. Thank you, engineers. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Glenn. Good. Thanks. Thanks.